Hello community! Let us talk today about an AI phone. Now, maybe you think the latest iPhone offers only incremental enhancement, and even the recent Android flagship has only some evolutionary path. So both ecosystem, you only have more or less some local optima in the landscape. So hey, why not go for something new? Now, I don't want to be dreaming here. I just want to transfer all the current AI functionalities that we have today, that are running on GPU clusters today, transferred to a local phone. What would it mean? What are the system requirements? What could this phone do? And what are the arguments pro and against it? Now, at first, our large language model, our AI system components have to be small, really small. So we are talking here about LLM quantization effects. If you want, in my last video, loft quantization, I showed you how to do this. We are talking about transfer learning from our monster GPT system. We cannot afford to have 100 GPUs running in the background. We have to extract the knowledge from GPT-4. We have to use synthetic data set, also generated by our monster GPT system, that are absolutely optimized for the task at hand. We need to integrate reasoning algorithms. We need to be sure we have to have verification and fact-based grounding integrated into our AI phones. And this means a complete new chip design. This means a complete new memory management, as I showed you in my video last week. So we are talking about Apple's M4, M5 chip in one to maybe two years time or Google's G4 to G5 chip. Now. Today, on my phone, I have all my photos, all my images, everything that I see and all my videos are on my iPhone. So if I have now on my iPhone a vision language model, easy. And the same happens with all my mails, all my verbal communication, all my calls, all my documents I have stored, all my posts on the streaming platforms, everything is on my iPhone. So. If I apply now a vision language model and a large language model, here for language and here for visual detection, I already have here a multi-AI system component. Now, does local AI on my phone learns here my personal, my individual style? So this means, these two elements here learn the way I take photos and the way I shoot videos, where and when I do photograph persons. It learns everything about my geolocations, where I am taking this, about my preferred motives, sunset, my friends, and from my communication, the way I argue, the way I communicate. When I respond, how do I respond? Am I emotional, fact-based? What is my background? What is my knowledge? What are my skills? All, everything, about my personal individual style, my personality. And just two LLM models will be enough to extract this information. Because you do not believe. Open your photo album and look at all the photos that you have on your phone and imagine what you could extract only from the visual information. Now, of course, main task is detect patterns. Detect my personal individual style and find patterns. Find patterns, for example, in my private time, in my hobbies. Things I like to do at certain times in the year. With a certain group of people. Go skiing, go football. What I wear, what car I drive. None, because I sold it and I have just a bike and public transport. How I live, what I eat, and the list goes on. My professional working documents. My working emails, my private emails, geoposition, my behavior, my patterns I have, my financial statements, my radical records over time, everything that I like, I don't like, risk associated with my behavior, places and concerts I visit, my holiday trips, and all my personal wishes and desires I communicate between all my friends and my partner. So you see, what I want is here an individual personal AI assistant. And the task of this assistant is also easily defined. 
should suggest places to visit, hobbies to explore, new paths to walk, meet like-minded people. I would like to act against climate change, looking for recipes for a healthier diet, be motivative so I do more workouts, improve my professional skills, write better emails, have a more nuanced communication, more to the point, make me aware of interpersonal behavior, learn new patterns of behavior. I want to optimize my spending habit, my financial habits. I want to be more productive in my work. I should have more regular medical examinations. I want to take holidays for a CO2 reduced travel time. And I want an environmental friendly behavior. So you see, easy. Now, the main concern that I have, defining my goals and the boundary concession, is I want privacy. I want a local compute AI. Because I want some professional AI advice for my life, for my learning. I want to have some personalized insights and in my individual AI-based recommendations. This includes communication that are fine-tuned to my needs. What news sources I like to listen, what TV channels I do not like to listen. This AI should make me interested to learn new things, motivate me. Challenge maybe even my way of thinking out of the box. Be there for my learning. Improve my understanding of facts of whatever happens in the world. I want to nurture here my empathy. And definitely I want to block all nonsense data. And I want to block some general ads in my streams. Everything that is pouring down on me here from commercial companies. So you see, those are my simple goals. I'm a simple man. So the interesting thing is with a private AI system that is mobile and that is handheld, you have limitations very easy, even in two years time. So my local AI can really be a minimal AI system. And if you look Today, at Cepheus, 7 billion free trainable parameters, and look at the beta edition that was published yesterday. It outperforms the AI system that are 10 times as big because they had a clever training and they apply a lot of AI insights to optimize only a 7B model. So for sure, my local AI on my future phone does not have to be at all as powerful as this monster GP, GPT-4 system here from OpenAI. It is not necessary. But it should be able to analyze my personal data, my images, my communication. Of course, why not integrate also the biomedical data in a live stream from my whatever watch? And should give me advice and guidance. And I have seen people, students, talking with ChatGPT like it is a person about anything, about really private matters, about financial statements, about what do you think I should study next. Unbelievable. So I think a strong personalization of here a private AI system can be really beneficial. But of course, you have to have the ability to have an update AI according to my needs. What I mean, maybe I want to update my AI system here to include some medical knowledge. Or if I study, include some mathematical knowledge. Or maybe I say, hey, now I want to update my new finance module for some advice. Or maybe I want to find out about the latest development in physics, but I do not have time to read 1,000 scientific publication. I want to have the insight into this publication. So I want to upload this to my private AI. Maybe I want to have a new language that I would like to learn. And I am a simple man, so I have simple skills. So how or what is the best way to learn a language? It is not the same for 8 billion people on this planet. I want to learn it here in the best optimal way, given my personality. And I also want to learn about something new, maybe about history, maybe about art. But again, 
Not about the data. I don't need to look at Wikipedia to find out about the data. But I want to learn the complex insight of a specific domain, like art, painting, sculpture. You knew it. And to be able to do this update, I understand that here on a phone you only can run inference models. But hey, there's something like a Thunderbolt 4 connect. And there's something unbelievable small lag here. Not sponsored, by the way. Some, I don't know, Mac Mini. And you just connect your phone to a Mac Mini and a Mac Mini overnight is fine-tuning your private AI to include new knowledge modules. It is so easy. You can do this today on your GPU cluster. So maybe in one or two years we can do this on an AI phone. Look at it from an pers investor perspective. As an investor, you want to maximize your financial investments. So you are looking for the next killer app here in the digital economy. Now, let's look at two companies. Microsoft, for example, with a huge market value of over $2 trillion, has established product on the market and is continuously generating profit. It's great for shareholders. But Microsoft has chosen the way to integrate here this new AI functionality in its existing products. And if you know the theory, innovation theory by my beloved Professor Christensen, you know this is just incremental innovation. Now look at a different company, OpenAI. OpenAI is in a position, although it owns $13 billion to Microsoft, to ignite some disruptive, radical new products, like an AI phone. And if you read in the news, there are rumors that OpenAI is looking for partners to really produce an AI phone. You understand why I make this video. And as an investor, you don't care about who is doing what on a technical level. You are asking yourself, hey, what is the maximum growth rate? What is the maximum return on investment I can achieve in the shortest period of time, given the risks that are associated with this? Think about it. Would you invest in company A or would you invest in company B? It depends on what is the way you like to invest on your situation. So you see, but opportunities open up. You know I'm a simple man, so I can tell you what I don't want. I don't want a phone without any local AI or AI reasoning. I don't want a phone that just transfers everything to the cloud, an empty phone. Because I understand that one company, and I do not mean Amazon, invested massively in cloud compute centers, 10,000 of GPUs from NVIDIA, data center GPUs, just for AI. So there's a massive AI infrastructure here paid for by this commercial global corporation. And now they have to optimize its usage. Great. But if you now transfer all your personal data from your personal non-AI phone to the cloud, to this infrastructure that is owned by a global corporation, it is up to you if you want to do this. I understand that from there investor perspective from the company perspective who already invested here in this massive AI infrastructure that they now want to use it they want to maximize their profit on this infrastructure and they say hey it is so easy it is running today everything that you wish we have in our cloud however being also not only a simple man but also a little bit a complicated person I think hey I don't want that so Easy. I don't want my personal private data in a supercomputer center of a global corporation. I have no access to what happens with the data. Maybe they are used for training some generic persona here for simply commercial purposes. Maybe I'm categorized in a 52 level customer schema in order to maximize profit of other global corporation. And I know that I want some freedom of choice and also this might be an illusion. I know this. And I do not like a one-size-fits-all response, so this is not at all personalized. I want to have my private local AI in my pocket, right next to me. 
let us have a glance at the future. We know quantum supercomputers are coming, no problem. Even today, we have an always-on display. We have an always-connected phone. I'm constantly receiving data. I'm constantly interacting in a virtual platform world. I'm always posting. I'm always receiving feedbacks, especially from my subscriber. I'm always integrated into something, but I'm always only a small part of something. And sometimes I really feel lonely, although my virtual integration. So, interesting fact, but hey, we're focused here on investor. So, do you want, as a customer, as a client, or as an investor, be really absolutely dependent on one global player? Do you really buy their products because they have established here a global dominance on the market? Is this what you want? And do you want to invest in them? And this is a different question from do you want to pay for their products, for their services? So I hope this video gives you some maybe new perspective about an AI phone. I'm quite sure that an AI phone is really in the pipeline. And given what we can do today on GPU clusters, I think the integration into a phone is maximum one or two years away. I hope it was interesting. This was the Halloween edition here on my channel. And it would be great to see you in my next video.